Hello and welcome to World Inside with Li Tianwei, coming to you live from Beijing on CGTN. Coming up on today's program, the shape of water wins big at the Oscars, but there was no sign of China among the foreign languages nominees. Could China's box office success eventually translate into Oscars history? And in tonight's great talk from the two sessions, we are going to talk to one of the most impressive names from venture capital here in China. Neil Shen gives us a showdown on what it takes for Chinese businesses to go global. Let's begin our program in Los Angeles, where the Oscars have been handed out at the 90s Academy Awards on Sunday. The Shape of Water was picked the best picture, while blockbuster Chinese films, none of them make it as the best foreign language film nominee. Let's take a closer look at the awards and what is the takeaway from this year's award? The Oscars. Very Gary Oldman's portrayal of Winston Churchill in Darkest Hour earned him the Best Actor trophy. Frances McDormand had been a favorite for Best Actress. She was a grieving mother in the three billboards, wowing the Academy with her performance. The Shape of Water was the night's biggest winner, with two Oscars for Best Picture and Best Director. Well, it's a, it's a very political very f fabulistic fairy tale uh, about love and coming together. Uh, very tender, but uh, it's a beauty and the beast that does include adult sexual elements, but it's not kinky, it's very pure, emotional. Movies from other countries enter the best foreign language movie category, but there is no sign of China. In 2017, China's box office exceeded seven and a half billion dollars and domestic movies accounted for more than half of the earnings. The blockbuster Chinese film Wolf Warrior II was sent to the Academy for consideration after it raked in $864 million at the box office, but it did not even receive a nomination. The Oscars, the Academy is looking at films that are a little bit smaller, a little bit more artful, um, and not necessarily the most commercially successful. China has submitted films to the Academy for years and got nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film Award several times, but none of them won. The Academy is a lot of Americans, Europeans, it may have a lot of people that are not familiar with some of the uh, cultural tropes or just, you know, some of the messages in those movies. But yeah, I mean, China is a very big part of the world movie market now, and its uh, absence from a lot of awards nominations is ubiquitous. China is on track to become the world's biggest movie market in a couple of years. More and more Chinese films are contributing to the thriving industry. Could Chinese films eventually make Oscars history? Can Chinese films also be the winner of the Oscars? That has been a question being asked for quite some time to answer that tough question. For more on the 2018 Academy Awards as well, let me join by Christopher Brembo, who is the founder and CEO of Bayes FX. That's an Emmy Award winning visual effects company. Welcome. Uh, I think it's China. Stanley, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, and also we have Ben Ji, who is a film producer and former executive at Warner Brothers and Disney. Thank you Welcome. for having me. Last but certainly not least in London, we invited James Mudge, who is CEO of the Next Day Agency. Welcome to the three of you, gentlemen. I want to begin by asking you, what do you think is the biggest takeaway for this year's Oscars, even though it is still a little bit far away from the Chinese movie industry? Ben? Well, uh, I would like to mention a little thing. Uh, at the end of the speech by the uh, best actress, uh, Frances McDormand, uh, she said inclusion writer, meaning that uh, going forward, she uh, encouraged the Hollywood actors to include the kind of uh, equality of racial and the gender mm -hmm. terms to their hiring term, to their hiring contracts mm -hmm. going forward. So meaning that, well, that's also my takeaway from the whole uh, Oscar ceremony. Uh, the, the whole business, the whole industry is yeah. trying to encourage the equality of racial gender. Yeah. Oscar awards is always uh, one of the showdown of all the celebrities with a pinch of salt. 
of politics, some say. Uh, is that really exceptional this year? I don't think it is. I think pretty much every year is pretty much the same. It's just Wonderful. This we got disagreement among our guests. Mm -hmm. That make my job much easier. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think the, the issue is more about it's more noticeable now simply because of the scandals that happened last year uh -huh. but overall I think the problem that you have between the Hollywood and China is because the interests are still very distinct because China itself is more... We're not going to China yet and we're just yeah. talking about take away from this year's Oscar. Well, in terms is it of too political or just as usual? Actually the surprising thing it has been less, it has been more social part in terms of more vocal on that mm -hmm. but politically it has been toned down because if you notice that they didn't attack Trump at all except for exactly. once. Yeah, mm -hmm. but gender issue could also be part of the politics as you may know. Let's go to Mr. Maj as well in London. Uh, do you think this year is much difference? Uh, is there something that you miss or is there something that you hope will be there? Uh, no, I mean I, I think the Oscars played out pretty much as I expected this year mm. to be honest with you. Um, I think they continued their tradition, um, as, as we heard earlier, of kind of staying away from the the, the big budget necessarily, the popular films, um, to award the, the biggest uh, the biggest prizes to. In the case of China, um, I mean, World War, World Warriors too is a, it's a very action-packed, entertaining film, but it's just not necessarily rightly or wrongly I think traditionally what the Academy is looking for mm. uh, at this point in time especially when you look at uh, the other more recent winners of the uh, the foreign language Oscar mm -hmm. nobody is expecting only big box office would translate necessarily into the list of winners when it comes to the Oscar exactly. awards how far are we from there or you mean China? Is, that, is that the standard that the Chinese movies are looking at at all the, uh, you mean the Oscar standard yes. Well, Oscar is the Academy Award. It's just like China's Golden Rooster Award. But um, I'm not sure whether it's very that comparable. A Golden Rooster Award is also the you know kind of award presented by the China's Academy of uh, uh, Movie Arts and Science. Okay. So it's very it's the counterpart. It's the it's the same thing. But all the uh, Golden Rooster Award winning movie uh, Chinese movies usually they're not they're also not big box office mm. gro uh, uh, grocers in Chinese market. So uh, pretty much the same standard in China too. Mm. You know. but Commercial uh, movies, uh, art movies, different. Uh, do yeah. you think, is it fair that people have the expectation that the Chinese movies should one day make to the Oscars? Or does it really matter when it comes to the judgment of qualities of Chinese movies to you, Ben? To be frankly, it doesn't matter. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the American Academy, uh, it's not Chinese Academy. And also, even for Chinese movie to be nominated or win something, right. it will be in the category of foreign movie. Still a minor category for, uh, you know, Oscar. And mm -hmm. even so. that, if you look at the nominees that won for the nomination, uh -huh. All the foreign films were also art house films as well. Exactly. So even if you would get into that, China is not pretty much in a mood about releasing art house films at the moment because their priority is to boost up the, box, the local box office. Is anyway. that the priority? Yeah. Mm. Is that the priority well stated, or is that a priority that you thought would be the trend of the industry as is a movie maker yourself? is the priority for the investors, not uh -huh. the priority. Obviously, the filmmakers, they want to make the best film as possible. Yeah. But currently, if you look around the, the, the situation now, the investor, the Chinese investors are very particular investors, a little bit different from the typical American right. investor. Yeah. They put their hand on whatever they can. Here comes the interesting thing, yeah. that is, uh, to Mr. Maj, uh, uh, what about that? The uh, talk of war let's just say, if I could use that phrase, between mm -hmm. the movie producers and also the directors, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the nature of it, as being stated by Mr. Bremble earlier, is that uh, also what you have just noticed when it comes to China? Can you hear? Okay, let's come back to you, Ben. What about that? Oh, oh, so sorry, the the, the kind of tug of war, uh, that is whether it is going to the side of the money, the investors, uh -huh. or going to the side of so-called uh, 
the dream of the movie makers, like you say, the directors and all of those who is in the industry. What do you think? Where is China right now? Uh, the well, money speaks, and uh, that is the only thing that speaks. Uh, I think it's money speaks mm. at this point in time. Are you happy with that? Well, um, it's not about whether I'm happy or not. It is the necessary kind of stage we need to experience. Please explain. Yeah, because uh, in Hollywood now it's very balanced. We 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 can see a very uh, big blockbuster which can gross box office worldwide, mm. and also we can see very high level good quality art house movies. But this balance is actually based on the uh, 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 on the uh, you know kind of uh, market status of uh, a lot of a lot of movies can make money only by having a lot of money making movies, you know, and then you can. Uh, have the money to produce high quality art house movies. I think this is a necessary state steps you need to take. Mm. So you are suggesting earlier China did not have a great art house movies because China did, had not then took a different step. system. Different system. Right. Before. Explain yeah. to our viewers because they might not necessarily know what is going on inside in the, out. In the past times, you know, art achievements is the only standard for Chinese. Uh, movie uh, business because all the old all the movies mm. were actually produced and financed by the government, right? So uh, the, the movie producer and director they don't have to care about the commercial value of the movie. Mm. But then we enter into this whole market economy, uh, the commercialization of the film market, film business. So people have to care about the money they spend on the movie because it's their own money. It's the money uh, they spend from the private companies, right? Right. So, and also the for the Chinese audience, we're on the stage of uh, going to see the special effect. You know, the the big eye-opening. You know, uh, superhero movies. Are you really representing me? I'm not sure. Well, the so majority. Here comes the question. Here comes the question. Yeah. Have you ever done any survey about that? Where you were saying the majority yeah. of the I, audience. I have seen a lot of surveys, okay. market research. And they are looking the for special effects. And that's exactly what CRISPR yeah. has been doing. Exactly. So you're having your great business in China. That's what people are looking for, according to Ben, in movies. Um, yes and no, because technically, even though the people from that field are doing a lot of money, they, it's being tagged to a point that I think people, they also, from this field, they also want to have a change as well. Because I think they, they wanted to make, like everybody, every, every filmmaker, they want to yeah. make a better film somehow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better yeah. film to you is what? I think the film that are more meaningful yeah. from a social point of view. Give me some examples that you have watched, the Chinese ones recently, if there is any. Forever Young. Forever Young. Youth mm -hmm. from Zhang, uh, from Fresh Angel, right. Angels Were White. Yep. Right, that Angels kind of are white. Yes. Very white. I like yeah. that. Now, those films are really the, the ones that we aim the yeah. most because that's are the ones that inspire the most. house movies in a way, or drama. Uh -huh, drama. Drama stories in yeah. a way. So yeah. it's, it's very much blurred, I guess, uh, when we talk about the art house movies, uh -huh. particularly the art house movies that you just mentioned. Well, but like they're good movies above anything else. Exactly. They're not, not about being art house or not. They're essentially good, well-told stories right. that are told from a very sincere point of view. Yeah. Because the only way that you can see, because I think a lot, a lot of people are treating people like stupid people because ah, they're coming to, but not a lot of people are just dumb because people can sense right away if the film was told from a very right. sincere, genuine point mm -hmm. of view. That is very true, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, James, would you agree? I was told that I need to pronounce your name very loudly so you can hear my voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I can't hear too well here, but yeah, I can hear you. I think I can hear you okay now. The question, what about that? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the question is about uh, art house films versus commercial films and what people... I guess, in a way, films. yes, go ahead. Um, sure, I mean, I mean, I heard a couple of films being mentioned there, like uh, Youth, for example, which was, which was very popular uh, here in the UK for both Western and Chinese audience. Um, I, mean, I, I think there's always going to be that kind of difficulty between making a, an easy money film, which is a, a franchise film, whether it's superhero or part of, the, part of the Star Wars franchise, which is going to make money as a safe investment, no matter how good or how bad it is. But 
I th I think as someone you know it's people like us who you know who work in film and everything we still have to to have some hope towards the fact that you can yeah. make films which have good have a good script which have good characters and which can still have you know good action sequences good special effects and everything as well right. there, there's no real there, there's no real need to actually or guarantee to say that you can't combine the two um, and writing writing is obviously the let's be honest one of the cheapest parts of the film process so actually coming up with that kind of good script um, you can still deal talk about social issues you can still have uh, real emotions in the story mm -hmm. uh, and you can still combine that with special effects uh, in theory at least but because of the investment nature the amount of money which goes into it right. um, you can Are understand why people people take the easy route yeah, are we seeing a lot of, uh, or some cases of success? For example, the movie Youth, mm -hmm. uh, coming from Feng Xiaogang, yeah. or Wu Wen Dongxi, Forever Young, mm -hmm. in a way, that mm -hmm. you just translated. Yeah, yeah. Um, are they the pioneers in that trend, or actually the movie, actually this, the development of the movie industry mm -hmm. in China has already moved to another stage before you guys it's noticed starting. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. Yeah, because. Uh, well, a good example is uh, like uh, three billboards yes. is already shown in China mm -hmm. and has grows not bad, you know, box office in the first tier cities, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou. So uh, it won't be like this before, right? The Hollywood yeah. winning movies would not make good box office before, but now we're it's already showing the kind of trend that uh, people are, uh, I mean, the audience, Chinese audience, are going to see uh, diversification of diversify, you know, genre and uh, style of different movies. Mm. Uh, yeah. And just to try to add a little bit, just keep in mind one thing, China is probably the only country in the world mm -hmm. that rejected Star Wars. Rejected Sorry? The Star Wars? Rejected the last Star Wars. It was a flop here. Oh, so you have to remember that because... So even your argument is? The Chinese people are not as foolish as, as they think. Well, Star Wars is a, it's a very unique example, yeah. right? Because yeah. China lacked the kind of tradition of True. seeing this franchise. But at the same time, if you look around, like they didn't even have the tradition for Marvel. You know? But Marvel is new. I mean, a whole Marvel yeah. superhero movie is just, mm -hmm. you know. Here comes the thing. Come to the world. What you're like saying is a standard, in fact, by using popular Western sequels or sequels popular in the West to judge the taste of the Chinese movie industry. Mm, May I present the question mm -hmm. that is that a fair way of measuring the market uh, and measuring the sense of judgment? These are bad examples. Actually we can judge it, the example from Secret, Secret Superstar because mm -hmm. it was an Indian film made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yeah. I think when we are judging because it's just because of easy target okay. that we can talk about that but we can pretty much talk about other films that can come from Europe uh, or Latin America. So and your, your, your argument is when you are saying this? I'm just saying that I think people should be more willing to try out new things. Yeah. Well all, the go all good movies can sell. Yes. What is the new <laughs> thing to you? I think to watch Marvel, then that no, is no, 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 far from it. Mm -hmm. I think this is the part that uh, I think what we should try out, and this is something maybe this is the part that's concerned. And I think China is trying to build that. I think what China is actually missing something that uh, the Americans and the French they already have. The French they build their Luc Besson. The uh, I'd say who is the other guy that from Japan that's actually very poor. What's missing is that we don't have the same commercial authors that mm -hmm. other people, like we don't have a somebody equivalent to David Fincher, okay. we don't have anybody equivalent to Christopher Nolan. Okay. So you are, are saying big <coughs> brand name when it comes to movie yeah. directors. Authors, mm -hmm. the next generation, the, the next generation the of the people, because everybody's just looking, oh, because it's only more. No, I can't, we can understand the problem from the investors because they want to bet on a right, on a right horse, mm -hmm. right. okay? Because they have the right to do no, that. I, oh, I need to really need to know your argument because mm -hmm. you've been going on and on, sir. So mm -hmm. what exactly is your argument? I, if I could go back to Ben, no, that's very important. What you have? 
We have an uh, argument that China needs to take bigger risks with newer filmmakers. Bigger risk? Risk okay. in what sense? Is that the, what the movie industry would embrace? Uh, I think we need, uh, or every country, every market needs kind of a, a real movie maker or master movie maker who can combine the uh, commercial value and also the artistic mm. uh, value. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Like, is China like good, lack of it at this moment? Uh, there are not many, but we can. We, I, Do well, you think your Hollywood has many? Well, like for example, good example is the Shape of Water. Mm. Shape of Water is is not art house movie. No, and, it's not. Right, but, but it it's an indie movie, very low budget. Exactly. And it's a uh, it's a movie of all genre. Mm. It's a monster movie, fantasy, comedy. One of the, one of the things that probably you have noticed, yeah. Ben, is some of the document document movies yeah. that are really art house in a way. Exactly. Got into the box office big number like compared to what it used to be. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, like a hundred million yuan. I yeah. mean, to China, box office, that's not small uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. So what, how about that kind of issue? Uh, kind how of much exception. time do we still have left for this uh, discussion, I really wonder. <laughs> but, but let me ask you about yeah. that. So what do you see about the increasing diversity, apparently, in the market? Uh, it's... Uh, we start to see the trend of diversity in the market in China, but it's still a long way to go. Mm. It's far from the diversified, you know, uh, situation in uh, developed countries, in mm. Western countries like U.S. and Europe. So, what yeah. is the model? Is that the model you're looking at, or is there something that you think China could be built differently? China is a different market. It's, it's a very it's, different you market. Know, the isn't size, it? the population. Yeah. So. Uh, my idea is uh, for different tier of cities, mm. uh, for diff uh, I mean, audience in different tier of cities, they may have different taste. So All we right. need movies that can satisfy the needs of the audience in different cities. We have a lot of people who are practicing in the movie industry. We hope yeah. uh, you will come out with more brilliant ideas next time in our discussion. Ben G, Christopher, and also James, thank you so much uh, to the three of you for joining us. Stay with us here on World Inside with Tian. We're still to come on our program. I sit down with one of the biggest names when it comes to venture capital, Neil Shen, for his insider view on Chinese businesses going global, particularly from the high tech companies. Tonight's straight talk interview from the two sessions right after this break. We travel across the country to gauge the most pressing issues. We talk to the people about their greatest concerns. And explore the changes closely watched around the world. It's insane. Not come to an end. The ultimate power. Not only for them, channel expansion and reality. Join us for a special coverage of China's political season and see how the new government launches into its new era.